there. This is Lorena, the Yard Smart Lady. I am so glad you've come uh, to check out another video of mine. This one is with uh, working with charcoal. I don't know how many people have already worked with charcoal, but it is one of the most versatile uh, means of making marks on paper. And it's a pretty old one too, because basically it is wood or willow or vine that has been um, charcoaled in the fire. There are different methods to, to do this. Um, I think I watched once one of those uh, how things work and how they um, made the, the vine charcoal. It was pretty cool. I haven't figured out how to make it myself or I would. You can see these are some drawings that I've done in the past and they're very different but it's all the same material. So yeah, these um, six hyperlapse demos will follow after um, I give a little demonstration on how to use charcoal on several different papers. Um, this is the first demo that is the kiss. This next demo is going to be the, the tunnel. There's an abstract, there's a self-portrait, demo number four. And then demo number five is a magpie. And demo number six are some white flowers. And that's a digital um, drawing, by the way. So this, these are the different papers that I use. Um, oh, these are other drawings that, that, um, that I've done in the past as well with charcoal. But uh, the type of paper I used was Meetant's uh, Canson, which is that darker greenish paper, smooth Bristol, and uh, like a 80 pound drawing paper. It's not really pound, but that's what they call it, or 80 grams. And the paper um, differences, I don't know if you can really see it. Um, it's more like you almost have to feel it. So with Bristol, the smooth Bristol, it tends to accept the color of the, um, the charcoal. And this is the first one I did was a vine charcoal, which is a fairly thin um, piece, if you can tell. Willow is also quite thin, but just slightly thicker than the vine. Um, they're about the same, in my opinion. They, sometimes they, they, they might be a little bit different, but um, they're about the same, except for the size um, and possibly um, the texture changes just the tiniest bit. Vine is much thicker, uh, um, or this vine, I should say, this is a thicker vine. But again, uh, between the vine, the willows, the tiny vine and the, the, the thick vines and the, the willows, um, there aren't all that much difference except for the size. This next one is a much thicker um, piece. <laughs> I call it the stick because it's just, I don't know, it's a really thick piece of um, charcoal. This next one is a compressed charcoal and it's very dense and it definitely is not easy. You'll see later when I start to erase on these pages, the differences. Um, I think with the, with, um, with the smudging, there's not that much difference. And this is like a, like a, a legit charcoal from out of my uh, wood stove. And it is really cool to use, but it's not very reliable. Um, the pencil is very great for if you're trying to get details um, and you'll see in a minute when I start to erase. I'm using a kneadable eraser first um, to erase with and uh, you'll see that on the, the smooth Bristol paper it doesn't really get rid of, um, it, it erases okay with <coughs> with it, all the bits of charcoal, but it doesn't really clean it deeply because somehow the, the, the Bristol just accepts the color very well. Whereas this, um, it's kind of, it's really pastel paper, the Mitant uh, Canson paper. 
and so that erases really easily. The drawing paper is very similar to the, the, the smooth Bristol, and it just comes, it, it, it still stays on pretty well. And I use a different type of eraser. That one is the, the gummy eraser, I think. Uh, it's going so fast, I can't see. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's the, the gummy eraser. Yeah. Uh, or, the, yeah, it's the plastic kind of eraser. Uh, either way, the ones that erase really well is the actual pastel paper because the teeth are, or the tooth of the page or the paper is quite um, rough. So it doesn't soak in the color or the pigment as well as maybe the, the, the smooth Bristol paper, which it, it seems to just like suck the, the, the color in. Um, but all of them do smudge well with a smudger. I have this, uh, there's different kinds of smudgers and I like this kind that's really tightly wound and you, could, you can't even tell that it's uh, wound paper. The other ones are more like a, a literal piece of paper just folded up, but I like the ones that are really super dense like that, that they kind of shave so it looks like a point. Um, so that was that example and really, I'm just going slowly through some of these um, other charcoal uh, drawings that I've done. And you can see that with charcoal, you can achieve a lot of different uh, styles. And, um, you know, it's great for sketching, it's great for actual, you know, more realistic drawings. Um, I don't tend to do super realistic drawings. I, I like it, I appreciate it, but I don't usually go there. I just, I'm, I appreciate just getting um, somewhat of a likeness and, and a feeling in my drawings. So charcoal has that flighty feel to it and it's very, you know, forgiving because you can erase and then start over again, especially if it's uh, the vine char charcoals, they tend to be very soft. If you use the pencil and the, um, the compressed charcoal, it, it tends to be really a little bit more hard or dense, kind of like a regular pencil. So if you push hard on it, you're going to get, um, you're going to get a really difficult thing to erase. I mean, a difficult mark to erase. Um, these are these were done uh, from life and these last two ones and um, this was actually also done from laugh life but what was funny is it was um, slanted so I pulled it up to make it look less long and that was also done by life uh, in life or from life the cup drinker <laughs> and the kiss this I started actually drawing in the car and something you might want to know for your own information is that when you draw in the car, make sure it's not too hot because if you are using um, a, an, an iPad, as I was, to film the drawing, you will be surprised that it gets hotter than you do and then we'll just stop working. So <clears throat> at some point this drawing, um, you can't see the rest. I didn't realize that it stopped working and said danger. Um, it's, it's overheating and needs to cool off. And so I found that out later, um, clearly, um, after I start, uh, was, yeah, quite far, far in my drawing. I was like, oh, it's not, it's not filming. So at least we got this much from the beginning where I start off with the sketches and, and I, I'm correcting the entire time. Um, I go back in with eraser. I go back in with, um, with a smudger, uh, to, to get it more like what I want. Uh, the first drawing I actually did was really more, it was <laughs> really cartoonish, mostly because I, I didn't, um, I wasn't measuring at all. I was just simply um, guessing and estimating and uh, coming up with what I thought um, would work. And the more I worked on this, the more I started p 
paying attention to details. And um, well, yeah, that's where it stopped because it got too hot. It, my, my iPad actually overheated in the car and I did not realize it was that warm or I would have paid attention to that. So anyway, you do get um, to see the results that I worked on. And you see that I did go back over um, it with a, a pencil um, charcoal because that gave the details, the, tiny, the smaller details that I wanted to add to it. Um, but I like the skin using the the vine charcoal or or the the willow. That way uh, you get a lot of details. Now the tunnel, um, this one was a uh, yeah. This is my quote unquote landscape, uh, which is really more like a it's a city scape because there's like can hardly see any any real nature in it <laughs> there are there is nature around but you can't see it in this particular picture all i did was um draw the uh the tunnel that was the most important thing there are leaves there are some dead leaves in the corner that i do end up putting in there so you see that I, i'm pretty much uh i started off with the drawing with pencil with the um, charcoal pencil and then I went on with the with the, um, the vine, which is super soft, and just got the color in to where I want it, I want that contrast to be between the outside or the light at the end of the tunnel and the darkness. Um, and I didn't want it to be super, super dark so that you couldn't um, see that it, because I, I liked the inside of the tunnel. It was really quite cool. Um, yeah. It's almost like a big drained pipe or something. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going. You can tell that I'm I'm going from place to place, and I'm correcting as I go, um, to get the look that I'm that I want out of this. And and I changed things around a little bit where I didn't feel like it was um, working for me. I like the lamps, um, I did change that a little bit until so that I, in, in the little rings of where the, the lights were um, showing their their marks <laughs> yes light has marked doesn't it it marks the darkness anyway <laughs> so anyway this is uh, what it came out to be and um, it was a really fun little sketch to do and um, I like the contrast of the, the figures going into the end of the tunnel. It was pretty cool. And, uh, and the illusion that there is light in the tunnel as well. It's a different kind of light than what's outside of the tunnel. This next one that I've done, the demo is of an abstract drawing. And I did not preconceive what I was going to do. I simply made marks on the paper and decided as I went along to do that dialogue with what I wanted to do. And I started off with a frame. So I just drew a, a line around where I wanted everything to fit in. And I wanted to start bold, so I went with that super dark, um, I called it the stick. <laughs> and, then I, and then I used the uh, smudger, smudging tool, tool to um, to do the drawing as opposed to the pencil first. And then I went over it with the pencil uh, where I liked to have that. And and I just, I wanted to show some different uh, ways of using the charcoal. Um, so with the lines and with them with big forms and then making the eraser work as a drawing tool as well onto the the color fields of of the of the charcoal and uh, and that was just a lot of fun there was no preconceived notion i just simply had fun with it and where it was darker i decided hey let me erase it and do this some texture some lines and then i decided hey let me do some answer back with it with some dark ones on the other side um, and then I was like, hey, I need something totally different. 
and that's when I made this kind of it looks almost like a water splash splash um, coming from the top and uh, and then I was like eh, I'll just add a little bit of pencil in there and, that, and it felt like it was uh, working for me put a little bit more dark darkness around it just to give a little contrast and uh, it felt good I, I liked I like the result um, yeah it was fun not knowing and then saying, hey, I like it afterwards. Nice expressive little piece um, with charcoal. And there's plenty of contrast in it, just the different colors and textures. And then the next one was a self-portrait, um, which, you know, you're, when you're going fairly fast, um, you, you can miss some important details so if I had it done this with like a grid or something um, I could get it a little bit more accurate but I simply wanted to, um, to just look in the mirror and actually no this one is not done in the mirror my fault I actually took a picture just before and then I put the picture in front of me um, but I did not work in terms of a uh, of a grid all I did was uh, just sketch what I was seeing as, as close as possible and you know looking back I saw that I kind of made my face um, kind of smushed in together so my smile would be a little bit wider and but it didn't matter, I still caught um, uh, a bit of myself in it, so that was happy enough. Um, you, If you are a person who does a lot of self-portraits, you know kind of what I'm talking about when I say uh, every self-portrait is going to be different simply because every day and every mood and every uh, moment of the day and every mood changes along the way. So what I draw today of myself is going to look completely different another day of myself. So anyway, um, this one ended up um, coming out pretty good in the end. I like it. It's just, <laughs> you're always your, birth, your worst critic. I mean, if I had gone, if I had to spend more time on it, I'm sure... Well, probably I would have erased a lot of it <laughs> and started over. But I'm happy with the result. It worked. Um, and for me, I want to get a picture of the inside out, if that makes sense. When you get a self-portrait, you should see something of that person or, or of something of myself in it. And I do, for sure. Um, this next one is of a magpie found a picture of a magpie that I liked and um, really enjoyed this drawing um, because magpies just lend themselves nicely for black and white even though they're blue black and white um, you can't really see the blue but that middle piece um, that crosses over the white in the middle is actually a blue bit um, so I did make it slightly less dense in color or contrasting in color as the, uh, the upper black part. So I started out with just mostly um, the, the really soft and lightweight vine charcoal to sketch the whole thing and then I went back over it afterwards with the pencil. And it was kind of satisfying to erase the white area <laughs> afterwards. Um, so that's nice. If you had to do if I had to done it with a pencil, it would have been really hard to erase, and it would not have come out quite as clean. And but as I add more black, then the white looks even more whiter, and we have that nice contrast in the magpie bird, which is a really cool, funny, hilarious bird. It's kind of in, in the blue jay or the jay family. Um, they tend to like shiny things and they collect things in their nest just like blue jays and other jays do. Very interesting uh, birds. Um, this last 
uh, demo that's coming up is of white flowers. I, they look like plumeria, but they're not the same exactly, unless it's a different species of it. I could not find uh, another flower that looked close enough to it than the plumeria, but it, but it doesn't look like a plumeria. Did. So somebody knows what kind of flowers they might be. That'd be great. You can let me know in the comments. So anyway, this is actually a digital drawing. I used my iPad to draw this, and I used the program Procreate to, to draw it, which is pretty fun because you can take any material and uh, and it looks like the digital. <laughs> answer to that material, uh, even though it's completely not. And, uh, and I thought it looked pretty realistic, or, or well, when I say realistic, I think they did a pretty good job of emulating what it's, what a, what charcoal does. Of course, it doesn't feel the same, and you don't get dirty, some people will love that part. I don't mind getting dirty, I think that's part of making art. I don't mind messes. Um, for me, it just makes me know that I'm alive. <laughs> um, and there's, you know, you can always wash off. Um, or wear gloves for those who just don't even, you know, they can't stand the action of um, After I finished, I actually smudged. They have a smudger, a little finger, um, to make it look like the background is slightly farther away than the, the flowers. So anyway, I thought this came out pretty cool for not real material. So anyway, that is all I have for today, and I am so glad that you made it to the end, if you made it this far, and thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, any suggestions for when I do more of these videos, I have a lot more to do um, and different materials so and techniques. So just give me um, a heads up and I love if you could like and subscribe and comment, please do. If there's anything you would like to see or um, have me explain or, or if you're wondering about just don't hesitate to let me know. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.